All right, today we're talking to Stafford and golf trade, and you're going to get my true feelings on the Rams front office. Stay tuned. Welcome, Ramley. How are my Ram super fans doing? I am the Ram super fan, a.k.a. the voice of the L.A. Rams, a.k.a. Nick Williams. Unless you live under a rock, you're aware we have a new quarterback, and his name is Matthew Stafford from the Detroit Lions. Now, we traded Matthew Stafford for Jared Goff. We also gave them two first-round picks, one in 2022 and one in 2023. Now, a lot of people think that that's too much to give up for Stafford. Me, personally, I understand. Uh, you give up one first-round draft pick for Matthew Stafford, and unfortunately, we had to give up a second first-round draft pick just so the Detroit Lions would take on Jared Goff. Some people think it's a bit much. I don't necessarily think that. A lot of people value draft picks a little too much, uh, specifically first-round draft picks. We'll get into that a little more later on. Draft picks aside, Let's just talk about the swap for Stafford and Jared Goff. Uh, last year, we had the number one ranked defense. Our defense was amazing. I don't remember when the last time we had a number one ranked defense. It's ages ago. I, I couldn't tell you when. Um, our defense played phenomenal all season long, led by number 99 and number 20. Uh, you couldn't run on us. You couldn't pass on us. We were stout. The only time we struggled was in that playoff game, and I truly believe it was because Aaron Donald wasn't at 100%. Now, on the other side of the ball, the offensive side, I believe we did have a good running game for the most part all season. Towards the end of the year, Cam Akers really came on and really showed us why we went and drafted him. And I think earlier in the season when he wasn't giving us big numbers, the Rams team as a whole was putting up pretty good numbers using the, you know, the running back by committee scheme. They were doing really well with Akers, Henderson, and Brown. We had one flaw in our team, I feel. One major flaw. And that was Jared Goff. Now, it pains me to say that uh, because I am a huge Jared Goff fan. I mean, what Rams fan isn't? Jared Goff is the first quarterback to take us to a Super Bowl since Kurt Warner. How could you not love him? But I'll be the first to say he regressed significantly in 2020. It was really sad to watch. In 2018, he played great. He was in the conversation at one point in the season as an MVP candidate. Maybe not a front runner, but he was in that conversation for part of that season. And then there was the big game in 2018, the Rams and the Chiefs. I forget the exact score, but we both scored 50 points. It was, uh, some people were calling it the greatest football game of all time. Now, in that game, Jared Goff played like an MVP candidate. He played at an MVP level. That is also the same game that Todd Gurley hurt his knee. Todd Gurley hurt his knee and was never the same. Subsequently, Jared Goff was never the same after that game either. Jared Goff would go on, struggle for the remainder of the regular season. So did our team. We would make it to the playoffs. He played decent. Uh against the Cowboys, decent against the Saints. And then in the Super Bowl, he completely laid a huge goose egg in the biggest game of his career. The following season, 2019, he struggled the whole year. We missed the playoffs. But our offensive line was hurt the majority of the season. He was under duress all year long. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I gave Jared Goff the benefit of the doubt because he was constantly under pressure. And most quarterbacks cannot perform under that kind of pressure. 2020 comes. This is his time for redemption. You have the best defense in the NFL. You have uh, a healthy offensive line. And you have running backs that can run the ball. Oh, yeah, not to mention you probably have one of the top five best receiving cores in the NFL. And you still cannot get it done. My biggest frustration with Jared Goff was his decision making. It was that thing in between his two ears that was holding him back. It wasn't like he couldn't make the throw. No, he couldn't read the defense. 
time after time after time again. And Sean McVay knew that. That's why Sean McVay and Jared Goff's relationship was fractured all year. Sean McVay knew Jared Goff was not the guy because mentally he was just not the guy. I think Sean McVay made his mind up about halfway through the 2020 season that we have to move on from Jared Goff. And I don't think Sean McVay was mad when Jared Goff got hurt and he had to start Wolfman. I don't think he was mad at all. I think he wanted to see what he could do. Unfortunately, he got hurt after his second game and we weren't able to see more of him. As soon as the season ended, Sean McVay said, oh, yeah, Jared Goff's our quarterback for now. Uh, you know, that was a telltale sign. Then you have Matthew Stafford on the other hand. To me, Matthew Stafford has been a constant career overachiever. I know he came in as the first overall pick. He was hailed as this phenomenal quarterback that could do no wrong. Uh, if you draft him, you have a franchise quarterback for the next 20 years. But he got drafted to Detroit. Now, Detroit is the same organization that Barry Sanders only played a few years and said, you know, I'm, I'd rather retire early than play for this franchise. Calvin Johnson plays for a few years. I'd rather retire early than play for this franchise. This franchise is historically bad. This franchise has not helped Stafford whatsoever. They never gave him any weapons. I read a stat the other day, uh, and I didn't fact check this stat. So please don't come for me in the comments if I'm completely wrong. But I, I seen a stat that said in Jared Goff's 10-year career for the Detroit Lions, he had four running backs rush over 100 yards. Four running backs in 10 years. Let that sink in for a second. How can you expect a man to perform if you never give him a running game? If you never give him an offensive line? And a lot of people say, well, yeah, he had weapons. He had Calvin Johnson. He had Megatron. He literally had Megatron and that was it. He never had a second receiver. He never had a tight end. Never, ever. He don't know what a running back looks like. Now we get Matthew Stafford with what I believe is a top five receiving core. With Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Tyler Higbee, Van Jefferson. We give him a young, emerging running back in Cam Akers. We give him a pretty solid offensive line, which I expect to be even tightened up more this offseason. He's finally on a contender. Finally in his career. He has a defense that's amazing. We're going to get a Matthew Stafford that's going to finish as a top five quarterback in the NFL. And I love it. And, and, and it's very sad for me to see Jared Goff go because of what he did for our organization. It's really sad because I always, the Rams went 12 years without making the playoffs. And then we get Jared Goff, we get Todd Gurley, and those two players to me represented the turn of the tide from us going from a laughing stock to a contender. It was those two players. And to see their careers with the Rams end so prematurely, it hurts me as a fan. But there's one thing that makes that pain feel better, and that's winning. And I think we took a major step in that direction with the trade for Matthew Stafford. And a lot of people want to say, oh, we gave up too much. We gave up two first-round draft picks for Matthew Stafford. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. These draft picks mean nothing. Now, I want to talk the Rams front office. And of course, where are we going to start with? But none other than Les Snead. Now, Les Snead is the Rams general manager. He got hired by the Rams in February of 2012. Fast forward one month later, that's March of 2012. He's already making major headlines. He makes the RG3 trade. We had the number two pick in the draft. We trade back, get a bunch of picks. The Redskins go on to draft RG3. But Les Snead started with a bang. He would go on to have a lot of success drafting outside of the first round. Rob Havenstein, Tyler Higbee, Cooper Cup, 
John Johnson, Cam Akers, Terrell Burgess, all of those players were drafted outside of the first round. Now, he had a lot of success, but he also had some misses. He did take Brian Quick with the first pick of the second round. I don't even know if you guys remember him or not. He did go on and draft Greg Robinson. Yes, Greg Robinson, the weed kingpin himself. He also went on a trade up to draft Tavon Austin with the number eighth overall pick. And then he also traded the farm to trade up to get Jared Goff. All of those picks that I just named, uh, Greg Robinson, Jared Goff, Tavon Austin, Brian Quick were all bust. But I don't give him too much slack for these picks. Yeah, Brian Quick, uh, at the time, it seemed like a bit of a reach. But Jared Goff was pretty much the consensus number one overall player in that draft, or the number one overall quarterback in that draft. Tavon Austin was on everybody's leaderboard as the best wide receiver in that draft. And Greg Robinson was on everybody's board as the number one offensive lineman in that draft as well. So I really don't fault Les Snead and the Rams front office for picking those picks because everybody would have picked them. They just didn't work out. And that's what happens in the first round of a lot of drafts. The Rams front office understands that every pick is not going to be successful in the first round. Now, I seen an article the other day uh, that was a few years old. So the numbers might have changed slightly since then. But it said that in the NFL, only 53 percent of first round draft picks turn out to be a success. Only 53 percent. That means 47 percent turn out to be bust in the first round every year. Go back five years. Take every pick selected in the first round. See who's in the NFL still. See who's on their original team that drafted them still. And look at who got extensions. Probably be split down the middle. So why do we value these first round draft picks so much? I would much rather trade a draft pick away and get a superstar. Or trade a draft pick away and get a solid starter. So to give up two first round draft picks for Stafford is nothing to me. It doesn't bother me at all. To trade two first-round draft picks and get the best cornerback in the game, Jalen Ramsey, is nothing for me. I would do it again. We haven't had a first-round draft pick since we traded up to get Jared Goff. Now, that first year, we were still under Jeff Fisher. That second year, we made the playoffs and we've been relevant ever since. The last four seasons, we've been relevant. We've been relevant ever since we started trading away draft picks. We've been relevant ever since. So why are you guys complaining about trading away draft picks if it seems to be working? That's what I don't get. It's working. The whole league is zigging and we're zagging and it's working. So please, Ramley, stop complaining about the damn draft picks. I do have a slight to the Rams front office. They have made some questionable contract extensions like Goff, Gurley, and Tavon Austin. They gave Tavon Austin a contract extension. The whole league was looking like, well, why? He hasn't done anything since you drafted him. Why are you guys giving him all this money? Then you have the Gurley extension, which, you know, the knee injury is unfortunate. It It, it, it is, you know, I, I still got a lot of love for Gurley. Uh, deep down as a fan of his, I'm, I'm actually happy that he was able to get that big contract uh, you know, before he calls it a career or, you know, before he got hurt with his knee. But the golf extension was very mind boggling as well. He struggled at the very end of that 2018 season, but he did lead us to a Super Bowl. But during that Super Bowl, he had one of the worst performances of his career in the biggest moment. And a few weeks later, he got a contract extension. Now. If we never gave him that contract extension, guess what? His contract would have been up this offseason. So instead of trading him away, we could have just let him walk. We wouldn't have all of this dead money on our salary cap. Well, another thing that I love about the Rams front office is that when they do make these mistakes, they are very quick to rectify them. They gave Todd Gurley a contract extension. He hurts his knee. Finds out that Todd Gurley is not the Todd Gurley of old and he will never be the Todd Gurley of old. And they cut him. Even though everybody said, ah, Todd Gurley will still be there because the Rams 
owe him X amount of dollars and it just makes more sense for them to keep him than to cut him. Ram said, no, we'll rather pay a bunch of dead salary than pay his entire salary uh, because he's just not good anymore. Jared Goff has a bunch of dead salary cap in 2021. I personally believe that Jared Goff was going to be on this team because of that. I said, there's no way we get rid of Jared Goff. What's going to happen is we're going to bring in a rookie. Or we're going to bring a very young talent in. And Jared Goff will probably start but be on a very short leash. Or the rookie outperforms him in training camp and Jared Goff is our backup quarterback. But the Rams said, no, 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 no. If we don't like you, we don't care how much money we gave you or how much money is coming your way. We will change that and we will fix that. And that's exactly what they do. Every time the Rams front office makes a mistake, they fix it. And guess what? Every front office is going to make mistakes. But most front offices don't fix them. Most front offices, when they make a mistake, they say, well, damn, I know I drafted. I know I drafted Sam Darnold in the first round. So, man, I got to I got to play him. I got to play him because he's my guy. And if he doesn't work now, I look bad for selecting him. So I really got to make it work with him. And then two, three, four seasons go by and it still don't work. And you just wasted two, three, four seasons trying to make it work with him instead of Sean McVay, Les Snead. And the rest of the Rams front office saying, man, we gave Jared Goff this contract extension. We got to make it work. And letting another two, three years go by before we finally decide, oh, this isn't going to work. Nope, let's wash our hands with him right now and move on. And that is commendable. And I truly believe that everybody in the Rams front office deserves contract extensions and pay raises. Why, you ask? Because... The Rams front office has proven time and time again that they are committed to win. And they're committed to win now. Not next year, not three years from now, right now. They're committed to win now. They have said that they will not waste the prime years of Aaron Donald. They will not waste the prime of Jalen Ramsey. They will not waste the prime of Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. They had the cornerstones of that offense and that defense for years to come, and they're committed to winning now. And for that alone, you're doing your job and you're excelling at it. And as a fan, you make me excited to look forward to every season. So for that right there, you deserve contract extensions and raises. Give yourself a round of applause. Pat yourself on the back. You guys are the best front office in football. This is not the Houston Texans. This is not the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Houston Texans, just a couple years ago, had Deshaun Watson on their team. They had J.J. Watt, Jadavian Clowney, DeAndre Hopkins. All of them are gone besides Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson is probably going to be gone soon. Why? Because they're not committed to winning. How could that team go ahead and tell their fans, hey, purchase season tickets this year? For what? What am I purchasing season tickets to watch? Why am I sitting on my couch every single week devoting hours of my time to watch this product if you don't want to win yourself? Stop it. That's not L.A. That's not the Rams. We are committed to winning, and that's amazing and i'm very happy to be a fan of the los angeles rams you know thank you for watching please drop a comment let me know how you feel about the rams front office let me know how you feel about the stafford and the golf trade and, and please like and subscribe that really helps out the algorithms it really brings more people more attention i'll catch you guys next time